This is Unit 10, Lesson 3, Algebraic versus Geometric Sequences. After the watching the video, you should be able to say yes to the following. You should be able to recognize and identify an exponential pattern in a sequence, and you should be able to create an exponential function from a table, basically making a function rule. Okay, two key terms. We're going to be talking about algebraic sequence and geometric sequence. Okay, a couple things to keep in mind. Algebraic sequence is a list of numbers that is a common difference, okay? And they are always linear, they produce linear equations. Versus a geometric is a list of numbers that have a common ratio, and they produce exponential equations. <coughs> okay, so another um, little tidbit or something to remember is when you're working with, with algebraic sequences, there's always going, you're always going to be adding or subtracting the y, okay, and it's always going to give you a linear equation, okay, and when you're, you're dealing with geometric, you're going to be multiplying or dividing the y, and it's going to give, it's going to produce an exponential equation. All right, so going back down to um, example one. Okay, here we're just going to have you kind of look at what's going on and prepare you for writing a function rule. So, using the table, we want you to determine if the data represent an algebraic or a geometric sequence. Okay, so what they're asking you to do first here is asking what is the change in x. So, if we're looking just at the top, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, what is happening to the x's sequentially? Well, if we add 1 to 0, it gets you 1. If we add 1 to 1, it gets you 2. We add 1 to negative 1 and get you 1. So if, when we add 1 to our x and keep adding 1, that's the sequence it's producing. Now take a look at the y. What's going on in all the y's? Well, if, let's start with positives first. It's a little easier to see. If we add 3, we get 5. See if we add 3 here. Oh, we get 8. What if we add 3 to the negative 1? Yes, we get negative 2. So the change in y is adding 3. So when we are, going back to that top, adding or subtracting y, we're going to produce a linear equation, which is algebraic. So the data is algebraic sequence. Okay? Now b, if you look at b, first going to look at the change in, um, change in x. Okay, if we add 1, we get 1. Add, add 1 here, we get 2. So it looks like we're going to be adding 1 again. Okay, now let's look at the below, the y's. What are we doing to the y's? Looking at the po the positive number, the whole numbers first might be easier. Well, see, I'm not going to be adding. So if I add 4 here, that doesn't make sense. But if I, if I multiply by 3, I get 6. And if I multiply 3 here, I get 18. Well, how about if I multiply here by 3? Those cancel out. Oh, yeah, I do get 2. Double check here. This becomes 3, 2 thirds. Yep, okay, so... I am multiplying by, oops, not two. I am multiplying my y by three. Okay, so again, geometric sequence, you kind of creep up here and look. When you're multiplying, dividing your y, it's exponential. Exponential is geometric sequence. Okay. Next thing, example two, writing a function rule to predict um, future results. Okay, so same thing we're asking you to do here. Asking what's the change in x. So we add one, add one. So it looks like we're going to be adding one. Don't really refer to this yet because this is jumping. But if we add one to our x's, oops, I do one, adding one. Okay. Now let's look at our bottom. What's going on in our bottom? So if I go from 3 to 9, if I add 6, but that doesn't work. If I, let me think multiply. If I multiply by 3 here, multiply by 3. Yep, that works. So I'm going to be multiplying by 3. So remember, um, an exponential function is y equals ab to the x power. So that's what I need. And just as another quick reminder, um, a is your y-intercept, and b is your growth factor. So, you know, what's going on with the y? 
So I want so the first thing I need to know, need to know is my y-intercept. The y-intercept is that zero. So zero twenty-seven. So twenty-seven is my y-intercept. And what's happening? I'm multiplying by three. This is my growth factor. That's my change in y. I'm multiplying by three, all to the x power. So this is my equation. That's my um, my function rule. Okay. So that's a. So it asks you to add, um, function rule and then use it to predict the results. Well, here's the result I have to predict. So for b, I'm going to go oops, y equals 27 times 3 to the 12th power. I'm going to take that 12, that x, and put it where my x goes. So if you plug that into your calculator, you get 14,348,907. As your answer. All right, looking over to the next example. What is the change in x? We're going to be adding one each time. What's the change in y? Well, let's see here. If I click maybe multiplying by two, yep, I multiply by two here. Do I get one? Yes. So I'm going to be multiplying by two. So to write my function rule, my a is my y-intercept, so 1 times my growth factor, I multiplied by 2 to the x power. So what happens when, how do I find this part, 15? So I have 1 times 2 to the 15th, if I plug that in my calculator, I get 32,768. All right, you tries you are going to do in class tomorrow. We're going to skip over those and go to the last example, putting it all together. Okay, so let's go piece by piece. So they're asking for A, what we just did, change in X and change in Y. So let's see, oh, I'm adding one again. Yes, adding one here. So I'm going to be adding one. That's my change in X. Now my change in Y, oh, I'm going down. So it looks like, I don't know if I'm growing exponentially, but we're going down. So what happens? So if I can't, I'm not multiplying, I'm cutting it in half. So if I divide by 2, I get 2 here. If I divide this by 2, I get 1. If I divide 1 by 2, I do get a half. So I'm going to be dividing by 2. Now the tricky thing with, um, you have to remember, is exponential function is a times b to the x power. So how do I get this to be multiplication? Well, because I don't want y equals 1 divided by 2 to the x power, I want it to be multiplied. So I have to change it. So if I have 2 over 1, what is the reciprocal of 2 over 1? Well, it's 1 half. So I'm going to be multiplying by a half. Okay, so b, it says, is it linear or exponential? It is exponential, and I, I whoops, it's exponential, and I know that because I'm either multiplying or dividing, but then they're asking you, is it growth or decay? Well, I'm going down. My y is going down, so I know it's decay. And how do I know? y is decreasing exponentially. Okay, and c, I want to graph the points. So if I go up on my points, I have negative 2, 4, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1 and a half, 2 and 1 fourth. You could see my curved line is decreasing from left to right, so I am true, I am right with the exponential decay. If I write a function rule, y equals a b to the x power. Well, I know my a is my y intercept, so I have 1 times my growth factor multiplying by a half, so times 1 half to the x power. And then the last one, they want you to predict the last column. So if I put 50 in for my x, y equals 1 times 1 half to the 50th power. Okay, you can plug that into your calculator. Or remember that you're doing 1 to the 50th, 2 to the 50th. So our answer is going to be in fraction form. And you're going to get 1 over 1.13 times 10. A huge number to the 15th power. Okay, please answer below. Make sure that you understand what's going on. Stop, review, um, re listen to the tape again, ask questions in class. And we'll see you tomorrow.